The antebellum reforms took place during 1824 through 1845. This time period was in response to both the changes in society due to the War of 1812 and the Second Great Awakening. The Second Great Awakening was the second religious revival in the United States in which masses of people would gather and pray. Many souls were considered saved during this time period. The Methodists and Baptists became the largest religion which resulted from heavy recruiting. The Second Great Awakening renewed religion as the center of American culture and redefined American religious groups much as the previous awakening did. Throughout the antebellum period, abolitionism started to gather momentum. Before the 1830s, abolitionism was not widely advocated for. Following the War of 1812, the cause started to spread but really took hold during the antebellum period. In 1816, the American Colonization Society was founded that sent freed slaves back to Africa. By 1830, the Mediatists, who wanted instant complete emancipation, had taken over the movement and moved gradualists aside. Initially, mostly blacks were the driving force of the reform, but by the late 1830s, the white race began to take part. In 1833, the American Anti-Slavery Society was formed. Gradualists feared that the impulsive actions would jeopardize peace. Authors such as Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote influential books like Uncle Tom's Cabin. The more opposition the movement gathered, the more the movement grew. The Underground Railroad was developed through the efforts of abolitionists. The women were highly involved in the abolitionist movement, but struggled to be accepted by the many male abolitionists. Women began to develop the idea that they could be an actual part in society besides mothers and submissive wives. In July of 1848, the Women's Rights Convention was held, also called Seneca Falls, and the Declaration of Sentiments was created to prevent discrimination toward women. Many of these women were inspired by the Second Great Awakening to improve society. The women were also the leading force behind the temperance movement. The temperance movement worked towards reducing alcohol consumption. The movement was inspired by religious women and employers. The women realized that the alcohol was tearing their families apart and the employers realized that employees worked harder the less they drank. States began to ban alcohol, especially in the South. This led to the prohibition movement in the 1900s. Horace Mann became known as the father of the common school. He became the foremost proponent of education reform. He argued that school should be free, universal, non-religious, and a public institution. He thought it was the best means of achieving moral and socioeconomic uplift for Americans. The modern day school system as we know it was formed during this period. During the 1830s, no state had a system of public education. In some areas, the teachers were close to illiterate. Through Horace Mann's efforts, the United States held one of the highest literacy rates in the world. He also established training for teachers. Dorothea Dix led reforms to jails and insane asylums. Before her efforts, these establishments were gruesome and medieval. The mentally ill were often overcrowded in the prisons. She helped lead the way in the idea that the mentally ill could be helped or cured. She ended cruel and neglectful practices such as chaining, incarceration, and painful physical restraints. Dorothea Dix successfully helped start 33 different institutions and even her own. The workplace needed reforms. The workers worked long hours in dangerous conditions. The workers were often children. Through these long hours, the children would often develop vitamin deficiencies. There was no work comp, and if you got home a job, then you were out of luck and out of a job. Labor unions began and people used them to help reform the workplace. People used their unions to promote proper practices, but they were often overlooked. The people were easily replaced by immigrants who were ready to work. Famous transcendentalists such as Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau helped lead the transcendentalist movement. Transcendentalism focused on liberation from understanding and cultivation of reasoning. The movement focused on intellect, emotions, and the soul. The intent is to create an original relationship with the universe. The idea of deism is enrooted in much of this movement. Transcendentalists acknowledge that there is a God, but believe he used natural laws to balance the world and then step back to let it play out. They instinctively reject all secular authority of the organized church. 
They believe men are divine, therefore they should not be enslaved. Many transcendentalists wrote books, such as Walden and Self-Reliance. The transcendentalists wanted to help the poor. They wanted to teach the ignorant and help the sick. They wanted peace and justice throughout society. Utopian communities began to develop during this time period also. The Oneida community started in 1848. The ideas behind it were based on the second coming of Christ had already occurred. Humans were no longer obligated to follow the morals of the past. All of the residents were married to each other and partook in free love. The community was founded by John Humphrey Nays. Brooks Farms had origins in the 1840s. It was created on the ideas of communal living. It was founded by George Ripley. The goals of all of these societies were to create a utopian society. Brook Farms were intended to be a place where intellectual life was stimulating. The Shakers were a religious group that established small utopian societies. The community did not believe in having children and relied only on converts, so eventually their group died out. New Harmony was a utopian society in Indiana. Its lack of authority and lack of cooperation caused it to break up. The Mormons were a group that was based on religion. This group was not accepted in society, so many Mormons moved west to Utah to escape prosecution. All of these groups only had a goal in creating utopian societies.